Here's a quiz. Guess which version of Windows is the longest lasting version in the history of Microsoft? Well, that's Windows XP. The CompTIA a exams certainly cover Windows XP. There's a lot of it still out there. It's a great, old, robust operating system, and it deserves coverage, and we need to know it pretty well. In particular, what I want to concentrate on is that there are three different editions of Windows XP that you need to be aware of. Now, there's Windows XP Home, Windows XP Media Center, and Windows XP Professional. Let's start with the big one, and that's Windows XP Professional. First of all, Windows XP Professional has the ability to log into a Windows domain. See, you can go out and buy a copy of Windows Server, and now these servers allow you to create an organization called a domain. In that way, instead of logging into your individual computers in a network, everybody logs into one big machine called a domain controller. Only Windows XP Professional systems can join domains. If you have home or media center, it's not going to happen. The other cool thing that Professional has is encrypting file system. With Windows XP Professional, you can pick an individual folder, for example, and encrypt it. Now, when you log in, it's automatically unencrypted, and you can use it just like you would use any other folder. But when you log off and someone else logs in, it's completely encrypted and invisible. And it's a very strong encryption, too, by the way. The third thing that you need to be aware of about Windows XP Professional is that it supports multiple processors. Now, I'm talking about physical CPUs here. Windows XP Professional can support up to two physical CPUs, whereas the other two versions can only support one physical CPU. Now, we're not talking about cores. That's a different animal altogether. What we're talking about are physical CPUs themselves. The other big thing that's important with Windows XP Professional is support for remote desktop. With remote desktop, you can log in to other Windows systems, in particular Windows Server systems is where this really comes into play, and you can control them remotely. This is how administrators tend to work on their Windows Server systems, and Microsoft wants you to have a copy of Windows XP Professional to be able to do this. The fifth aspect that separates Windows XP Professional from other versions of Windows XP is support for NTFS. NTFS is the super duper powerful file system that's the core of Microsoft Windows. Now, with other versions of Windows XP, it has NTFS, but you really can't access the power of it. With full control of NTFS, you can do really cool things. Like, for example, I can set up a folder that you can't see the folder, but you can access a Microsoft Access database inside the folder. Now, you'd think, why would anybody do something crazy like that? Well, imagine a world where you've got 200 accounts receivable people, and they're all sitting at computers all day long, and they're all accessing this one particular database. Now, you don't want these individual people going into the file server and actually looking at this stuff, but you want the program that they're using to be able to access that access database. So, in that situation, using really obscure but powerful NTFS access controls really makes a difference. It's not the kind of thing you'd really need to see too much in a home environment, and so that's the, they don't add it there. The last one is group policies. Group policies are Windows umbrella term for, I want to configure my system in such a way that you can't change the screensaver. Or I want to configure my system so that if you don't have a complex enough password, it won't let you change your password to that. Or I want to make a system that you're allowed to log in four times and then after four failed attempts, I wanted to lock the system down and send me an email as an administrator. So really powerful features like this are all grouped together under one term called group policies. If you want to do some of this more advanced stuff, you're going to have to have Windows XP Professional. So going down to the other two versions, Windows XP Home and Windows XP Media Center, basically the best way to remember what these guys can do is by understanding what they can't do and what Windows XP Professional can. So, for the test, remember we've got three different editions of Windows XP. Windows XP Home, which is the most basic. Windows XP Media Center, which is Home, plus the ability to run the Media Center overlay. And then Windows XP Professional, which has a number of powerful features, and that's the one you tend to want to use in a work environment. All right, so here is a Windows XP Professional system. This is a fresh install. 
And what we need to do at this point is just make sure we're familiar with some of the pieces of Windows XP. A lot of people have used this stuff, but the goal here is to put some names to all this. So let's start with some of the easy ones. There's our start button and our start menu. This is the taskbar. Down here is our quick launch. This is, we can put anything in there we want to launch very, very quickly so we don't have to dig it up through the menu. And then way over here is the notification area. And whatever runs in the notification area is stuff that we want to be able to keep an eye on so we, we can track stuff. So those are our main pieces. The big thing that Windows XP brought along was the concept of Windows Explorer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to open up my computer. My computer, what you're actually looking at right now, is Windows Explorer itself. In fact, if I open up any of these, these are all, as you can tell, very similar in the way they look, but they're all Windows Explorer. So one of the big things you need to be able to do is change your views. And you use this little icon right here, and you can change it to different types of views depending on how you want to be able to look at the data on your system. The uh, other thing is that you can click into tools and you can go into folder options. There's all kinds of stuff you can do on particular folders to set up how they're going to show, uh, all kinds of very detailed information. We'll be going into this area time and time again as we are digging deeper and deeper into Windows XP. So this guy right here is your Windows Explorer. Please don't confuse him with Internet Explorer, the web browser. They're two totally different animals.